Hey everybody, my name is Anthony Stauffer. I'm the owner of Texas Blues Alley, and the whole focus of my site uh, kind of started as a very Stevie Ray Vaughan-centric thing. Even though I teach a lot more than just Stevie Ray Vaughan stuff now, uh, that was my biggest primary influence. And so what I'm going to talk about today is a little trick that you can use an EQ pedal for uh, to get... It is kind of a Stevie Ray Vaughan tone, but it kind of actually traces back to Albert King because he had a very piercing, intense tone when he sold. So I'm going to talk about how to do that. Uh, and uh, like I've mentioned in my other videos, the reason I'm doing this for um, for Wampa Pedals is because I had a chance to come out here and visit them, and they've got this whole shred shed. Boy, try saying that ten times in a row. They've got this whole studio set up here to shoot videos, so we just turned on the cameras while I'm here, and I figured I'd talk for a bit and make some videos for them. So here's basically what I'm going to do. I'm going to explain how you can go from a very kind of nice bass tone and you can use an EQ pedal to get to a kind of a half cocked wah sound um, which sounds a little bit like Albert King so let's talk about I'm gonna use the pedal in the middle as my first demonstration so this is a boss PQ 3b it's a bass parametric equalizer pedal it's not made anymore, but I picked one up years and years ago. And a parametric EQ is good for this kind of thing because unlike a graphic EQ that you see here, on a parametric EQ you can actually sweep what frequency you're boosting or cutting at so it's not fixed the way it is on a graphic. But then I'll show you how to do it with the uh, a graphic equalizer too. So in my uh, years of experimenting with guitar, I kind of narrowed in on like 1.6 kilohertz being kind of like not the magic frequency, but that's kind of where the boost sounded the best. So basically I have everything on the pedal set straight up, uh, except on this band here. I don't know if you can read those numbers, but the bottom dot is one kilohertz. The top one is like 18. So I have it set somewhere between one and two, I think. And uh, the result, you hear it the most on the, uh, the higher strings. <laughs> So what you can do is, uh, if you have a parametric equalizer, you can just adjust that frequency. Bring the frequency down, the sound is a little bit thicker. If I bring the frequency up, it gets a little bit more pointed. So it's worth pointing out here that it feels like I've gained a lot more sustain in my tone. But I haven't added a lot more gain. So usually when you want to get more sustain for soloing, you add another layer of overdrive or something like that, which uh, works, but this allows you to get kind of a screaming tone that punches through without increasing the overall amount of distortion. And it just has to do with that frequency resonating a lot uh, with guitar. Uh, so one thing you'll notice when I kick this on, the bottom end, the bottom end kind of sounds like, it, like you turned the bass down a little bit because the mid-range frequencies are so emphasized. So what I would do is I would take the low end control and boost that up a little bit, but keep it at a low enough frequency that I'm not muddying up my signal. So it allows me to keep that very nasal nature that the upper mid-range boost gives me, but add in enough low end that the tone still feels a little bit more balanced. Now the reason I started doing this in the first place was because uh, I read that Stevie Ray Vaughan used two tube screamers with the tone control set all the way up. And I heard what that did for his tone, but I didn't have two tube screamers at first. That's why I started using an EQ pedal. So let's compare how that sounds to what would 
what it would sound like if you took a Tube Screamer with the tone all the way up and used it primarily as a tone shaping boost. <laughs> Obviously there are some similarities there, uh, but let's say you don't have a Tube Screamer and you don't have a parametric equalizer. Let's say you, you have a Boss GE7, which is like the most common EQ pedal you can find. Uh, you can actually simulate this with the GE7 because it has a band right at 1.6 kilohertz, which is right around that range. So what I've done here is you can see I've boosted the 1.6 band all the way up and I've taken the surrounding bands and kind of created a little bit of a slope there. So the nice thing with a graphic equalizer is that you can actually fool around with boosting more than one band in varying degrees to kind of shape the tone a little bit more. So if you uh, re kind of reverse these, put 800 kilohertz all the way up, you get a little bit of a fatter tone. The goal of all of this is that when you listen to Albert King play, he was using a flying V, which, you know, with humbuckers, which already has kind of a, a real mid rangey nasal tone to it. And I think he was playing through solid state amps or some ridiculously loud amp. And uh, he just had this really singing mid range heavy tone. So that's kind of what, what we're going for with this. Um, so keep that in mind as you're fooling around with the different control. <laughs> So that's the little EQ trick that I've learned to use uh, that works with a Tube Screamer. Parametric EQ is kind of the optimal solution or a graphic. And uh, you're using the EQ in a little bit of a non-usual way to provide a very thin notch boost right around 1.6 to 2.0 kilohertz. And it gives you that nice screaming uh, tone that you can hear on Albert King's recordings. So I hope that's useful to somebody uh, and uh, thanks for watching.